Letting go doesn't mean that you don't care about someone anymore. It's just realizing that the only person that you have control over is yourself. Deborah Reber. Letting go means to come to the realization that some people are part of your history, but not part of your destiny. Steve Maraboli. Letting go isn't a one-time thing. It's something you have to do every day, over and over again. If we take these words to heart, it seems as if detaching from something or someone can be seen as something entirely positive. So the question arises, why are we so afraid to let go? The, answer, the question seems difficult, the answer is rather simple. Humans tend to be habitual. We like having a set plan and uh, knowing exactly what to expect. We love having a routine that we can follow. This means that if we are used to something, we don't like changing it. The same goes for people. We love spending time with people that we have known for a very long time. People from whom we know what to expect and who know what to expect from us. We tend to avoid taking the risk of meeting new people with the fear that they don't accept us the way that we are. This makes it extremely difficult to detach from people, even if they hinder us more than they lift us up. We all have a person in our life with whom we do not need our social battery when spending time with them. Being with them gives you energy rather than draining it out of you. People where hours go by, but it feels like minutes. People that you start missing the moment they leave. People where you can truly be yourself. Most likely you're thinking of this person right now. I want you to keep this person in mind as I will come back to them later. But first, I want to share my own first experience of letting someone go. This story is dedicated to my best friend. We had been inseparable since second grade, and I think that at that time, she knew me better than I did myself. However, at some point, we took two different paths um, that laid away, led away from each other. She had met a new group of people that she become, became cl close friends with very quickly, and therefore started neglecting our friendship. Sooner or later, we stopped talking all completely and lost touch for an entire year. At the beginning, it was really difficult to adjust my life without her in it, as she had been such a major part of it. Um, I think that at that moment, uh, an important thing to realize is that the only thing you have control over are your own actions. In that situation, I lost control and was forced to accept her terms. And even though everyone only ever speaks about how hurtful breakups are, I can assure you that losing your best friend can be just as hurtful as that. Sooner or later, I started to forget about the pain and moved on, or so I thought. This time apart gave me the opportunity to learn new things about myself. For example, I realized my own self-worth and what I need and expect from a friendship. As well as that, it gave me the opportunity to build on other relationships such as other friends that were able to support me in the way that I needed in that stage of my life. So from my experience, I would say that there are five main reasons as to why sometimes it is important to let someone go. The first reason is personal growth. Sometimes when you hold on to someone, they can prevent you from developing yourself and therefore hold you back in life. Personal growth allows you to become the best version of yourself. It gives you the opportunity to learn about yourself and to use this knowledge to reach your full potential. Secondly, emotional well-being. Sometimes relationships can turn into toxic relationships. These can be extremely draining and damaging. Therefore, when this is the case, it is extremely important for your mental and physical health to let this person go, no matter how difficult it seems at the time. The third reason is different values and goals. Different people develop at different paces, meaning that often they end up in different stages of their life. Through this, they often have differing views and are working towards different goals in their life. When this happens, people can often hold each other back, meaning that if you cling on to this person, then you can both never fully reach your full potential and fulfillment in life. Additionally, by letting go, it gives you the opportunity to open up to something new, as often uh, you can miss out on things that you may later regret. Maybe there was something you've always wanted to try out in your life, but renounce it due to a person in your life. By detaching from this person, it gives you the opportunity to seize this moment and approach things from a new perspective. 
It is a time in which you can build on new relationships, um, friendships, and experiences. Lastly, one of the most significant reasons is self-worth and personal needs. One of the most important things within a relationship is that you are aware of what you need and expect from this relationship. Meaning that if those needs are no longer met by a person, or you have the feeling that a person is not fully appreciating you being in their life, or that the energy that you invest is not mutual, then it is time to let them go. It is really important in a relationship to stay mindful of not losing yourself and putting back your own needs when focusing on someone else. Letting go allows you to prioritize your own happiness, emotional health, and overall peace of mind. Especially if this person that you're so strongly attached to is causing you pain, it is important to let them go um, uh, instead of continuously justifying and uh, finding excuses for their actions. Coming back to my story, I realized that it was the right thing to do to let her go, as in that moment of time, she wasn't able to show me how much she loved me and appreciated me as a friend, as she was still trying to figure out how to love herself. After a year had passed, she got back in touch with me and asked me if we could meet up. Weirdly, I thought about what I should do for a very long time, because even though I thought I had moved on, somehow our story didn't feel concluded yet. Quickly, I then realized that I was kind of still expecting an apology from her for the way she had treated me, and that that had still affected me throughout the entire year. So we met up, and we talked about everything that happened. But even though she did apologize for her actions, I then realized that it didn't change the fact that it was still on me to forgive her for her actions, and that even though we had talked about everything, I was still in the same position I had been in before we talked. That was the moment that I realized that the most important skill to be able to let someone go is the ability to forgive them without having received an apology. This concept may seem absurd to you, as most might think that you'd want a person to acknowledge in what ways they hurt you. But when you come to think of it, you don't actually need that to move on in your life. Often, a person doesn't even understand or know how they hurt you and are therefore even incapable of giving you the apology that you think you need. A famous quote by Nejwa Zabian says, the person who broke you cannot heal you. You have to heal you. You can't expect the person who broke you into pieces to bring those pieces and say, I'm going to bring you back together. You can't do that. Well, you can, but why would you choose to do that? Someone who has the power to destroy you and uses that power why would you trust them with rebuilding you? Through forgiving the person who hurt you, it rids you of the resentment. And without all that hate and anger inside of you, it gives you the opportunity to open up to something new. So in the end of the day, I would say that there are two main outcomes of letting someone go. Either you let them go and you take two different paths, and then at some point you come back to each other, or you let them go and they do not come back. For my instance, I did forgive my best friend, and we started to rebuild our relationship that has now developed an even deeper connection than before. So a quote I read a while ago said that if you really love something, just let it go. And if it comes back, it's yours forever. If it doesn't, it was never meant to be. So the only question that remains is, at what point do I decide that a relationship is no longer good for me and I'm willing to walk away. The thing is, usually people already know who they should be letting go. The challenge is to admit it to yourself. You know yourself the best, meaning that in your subconscious, you're well aware of who is right for you and who is not. To come to that conclusion, though, can be a struggle. So let's go back to the person I described to you at the beginning of this talk, the person I hope you all kept in mind. I want you to take this person and use this person as a guideline to how other people in your life should make you feel. It's not about comparing the different people and saying one is better than the other. No, on the contrary. It's about seeing how this person brings the life out of you and supports you in being the best version of yourself. If this is not the case for other people, then it is time to let them go, to give you the opportunity for personal growth, new experiences, pursuing your dreams and goals, and staying true to oneself. I know it is easier said than done, 
But in the end of the day, by embracing the power of letting go, you unlock the freedom to enter a new chapter of your life filled with hope, growth, and endless possibilities.